Before the break, we asked you, a ball on the fringe of the green is marked, lifted and cleaned. Is that a one-shot penalty or a two-shot penalty? The answer is, it's a one-shot penalty. Well, I'm here with Paul Gibbons, owner of the Leaderboard Group and owner of the Oxfordshire. Paul's in terrific condition, this golf course, doesn't it? Just look mm. an absolute picture. Is this the kind of the, the climax of the season in terms of preparing the course? Yes, it, yes, in a word, although we do pride ourselves in presenting the not just the Oxfordshire, but all our courses in as best possible condition as we can get them every week of the year. It is important to the membership and to the people that are paying to play our courses. And this course is quite unique, really, because of the way it was kind of crafted almost from scratch and crafted out of the landscape, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It's the, it was, in its time, it was the second largest earth-moving job in Europe, second only to the tunnel. The lake that you see there, which goes all the way down 11 and round 8 and everything else, there's enough water in the lake to water the course for two years. I've loved walking around it today and, and as an enthusiastic amateur I thought this, is, this would be tough. Rhys Jones who designed the course, um, he's very very proud of, of not just his design but the way we look after the course and I do hope your professionals have enjoyed their trip to us. Well, I know one man who has so far, and that's George Walgart. Par 3 11th. Looking to make more fun in the sunshine here at the Oxfordshire. Another birdie putt coming up. Again, a sensible shot there. Not taking anything on there too much. Well, Harold has to start firing at the flags, doesn't he, really? Try and put a bit of pressure on the man on top of course Greg Payne who is alongside at 10 under can do no more he's in the clubhouse on that mark doesn't look like he's going to do too much damage from there though well there are certain flags he can go at and that wasn't one of them very tight and also you have to weigh up don't you I mean second place can be very important you know you can fritter away quite a bit of money and your rankings by trying to do too much and end up outside the top ten. Lovely shot from Max that on the par five, thirteenth. Looks like he's going to make a birdie. Curly putt left to right down the hill. Okay. Did actually play on the uh, the Dubai Desert Classic early this year. Did Harold a taste of the big time? That wasn't the best, was it? That was an ugly putt there. Tim Dykes tends to hit his putts. It's like a little rap motion, and that was a much better stroke. That means a birdie for him. Back to eight under. Walgut, who missed the first couple of events of the season with injury, but uh, his first event was Burhill May. Finished second at Coventry Park, and as we've mentioned already, winner at Longhurst Hall, and thought that one was in again, but well, he's left himself a bit of work to do for par, but every time he, he has done that so far, he, he's not the one back in. Come on, Max. Due one, aren't you? 12 straight pars, and there's your birdie. Perseverance pays. There's a few key holes to play, especially towards the end, and this short par five, one of them, the 16th, got a drive between this narrow area of trees. There's a lot of trouble right and left, but if you can get down in that narrow gully it leaves you a mid iron slightly up to a pulpit green raised up with bunkers all the way to the left and to the right it's a easiest hole on the course reachable by everyone well here's luke Cornford trying to do so 25 year old from sussex and he's putting together a really good round and well, that's found the bunker but he he hasn't shot worse than 70 in his previous eight Euro Pro Tour rounds. And the way he's going today as well, that looks like he's going to continue that little run. Mm. 
more. Well, it's almost getting boring, isn't it? Just lovely control. Good speed to his swing. It was an excellent bunker shot from where he was. He had an awkward stance. Start of the day at six under. Picked up three shots today so far as Cornford. Let's find out where John is again, shall we? Well, before I hit this shot, this is the 14th, par three, 210 yards long. 200 yards to carry the water, for crying out loud. I mean, look at the definition on this hole. Don't get any better, look. Tall, lovely brown grass, spunkers on the left. I mean, look at it, it's unbelievable. Like a stadium behind the hole as well. I mean, it is an absolute beauty. I mean, you've got to really pipe this one. This one has to come out the middle of the bat all day long. And don't be short because you'll be having a fine Nemo. Anyway, I can't resist it. I've got to have a go, guys. Middle of the green and rip it. He's on the dance floor. Take that all day long. Thank you. Does he ever miss? Yes. <laughs> well, let's see if Max Smith can do it. It does look stunning, doesn't it, this hole? Lovely backdrop. It's a good par three. It's playing the hardest hole this week. Not when you play it like that, it doesn't. Just had his first birdie of the day as well. Playing alongside him, Tim Dykes. More of an old style swing. Uses the hands, educated hands, Tim Dykes. And mind you, five shots still the lead for George Walgup. Six holes to go after this one. And he's been having to do a lot of that today, hasn't he? Getting up and down around the green. To be fair, he's, he's only just missed the edges of the greens. Catch up with Jason Dransfield again. Nine under par. Up and over the hill. Excellent touch. We should get him to ten under par. And that's our clubhouse leader at the moment. But here we go again. Walgut for a fourth unanswered birdie of the day. And the lead is six. Brilliant. Well, he shot 66 in the Pro-Am. 66 on day one. 66 on day two. He's four under for the round now. And, well, you wouldn't bet against another 66, would you? Well done. But unfortunately, that's another shot further back. Tied second, yeah, but 10 under. And the leader, 16 under. And just needed hitting right on line. Dykes remains at eight under. Former England amateur international. Smith with his birdie. Ah. T shot deserved better. Frustrating. Yeah, there's only been 27 birdies there all week. Cornford. Sorry, Dross. I say Cornford here. We've seen uh, this 18th is not too easy either, either is it? Well, a long second shot, the flag towards the back, probably about a four iron or so. Chance of a fifth birdie of the back nine for Cornford. Connor Fletcher, who uh, is based at Chart Hills, which is a sister course of this one, of the Oxford Shep. Good shot there for Fletcher. Now, the 15th hole is one of those holes where you're thinking about birdie. 340 yards, sometimes you think, I can have a go at this, but these bunkers on the left, we've just gone over, will stop that. So a long iron, and leave yourself a short iron approach. 
because that raised green is very difficult to stay on, even with a spinning wedge. And let's see how Dykes faces the challenge of this hole. As you mentioned, long iron off the tee. Challenge the left-hand bunkers there. He'll live himself an awkward little pitch. Call for then to finish off with a birdie. Oh, pity. Approach shot deserved a birdie, but it's uh, another good week for him. And a 69 that carries on that run of 70 or better in his last nine rounds now. It's that kind of consistent play that'll get you knocking on the winner's door. Slow up the hill on that par three. And back to the 15th where Tim Dykes, is he too close to the green? Awkward little pitch. I think the answer is yes. Mm. Well, trouble for the first time today for George Walgart. He had to lay up after a loose tee shot. And maybe a little bit too much spin on that one. That's what he's got left to avoid a first drop shot of the day. But I don't think bogeys are really going to hurt him too bad. Oh, there's not too many coming in. That's a bit more like it. Well, he shall make his four. Well, Harold's still got a birdie putt to come. <laughs> Up the hill, a little right to left. So a first drop shot, a little chink in the armour. Hardly a crisis, though, is it? As six becomes five in terms of the lead. though with a chance to maybe make it a two-shot swing on this hole. Maybe give something for him to think about if he can make it. Wasn't far away from doing so. Wind just getting up a little of these closing holes. So George Walgart does show he's human after all. A bogey at the 13th. His first of the day means he's back at 15 under par, but he's very much in control here at the WPT Championship. Five shots his lead, five holes to play. Well, yesterday, Kit Alexander caught up with William Harold after his superb eight under par round, which propelled him right up the leaderboard. William, great score, 64 today. Talk us through it. Um, yeah, I mean, it was bogey free. I mean, it was good. It's my best round ever, I think. Um, so yeah, that was nice. I've been waiting for that one for a while now. But um, yeah, no, I had, I think, four under on the front, four under on the back. So it was pretty pretty steady all the way around and uh, didn't make many mistakes. But if I did, I think I made three missed greens and I think I got them up and down. So yeah, it was good. OK, and you're well in contention for the tournament now going into the final round. What's going to be the mindset? Uh, same as today. I just, uh, I was good today because I was just going through my my processes of just trying to, you know, one shot at a time. It's, you know, that's what we've been trained to do, and that's the the way you got to do it. You know what it's going to take to win tomorrow because you got your first win uh, on the MENA tour last year, didn't you? Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, in uh, October. Yeah, it was good. I won the the tour championship. Um, I guess it was kind of similar to this. There was every, there was a load of guys, you know, in contention to do it. So I've I've got experience to win. So. Other than that, I've just got to try and do the same again tomorrow, I think. And as well as a nice check, a big shiny trophy, that also got you a start in the Dubai Desert Classic this year. Didn't quite have my swing that week, and it was a tough one because the, the courses are set up difficult. You need, you need to hit it quite long and pretty high as well because there's some good corners to cut and that. But, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but yeah, I did all right. I gave myself a chance to make the cut. I think I had a putt in the last two uh, to make it, but it was, it was a long shot. But no, it was a really good experience and just kind of sets the bar of what the ultimate goal is, I think. And going back to your earlier days, you went to college in America. Can you tell us about how that aided your development and why you made that decision? Yeah, I was, I got a, 
an opportunity to go and play golf in uh, the University of Missouri. I mean, you get to play against big names again in college, and I think a lot of guys coming through on tour have definitely sort of gone through that route now. So um, you get an education and you play golf all over the USA and a few other places as well. And do you think three years of year-round practice and competitive play in good weather on good courses gives you a bit of a head start on the guys that don't take that route before they turn pro? The courses are amazing and the, the having a team around you and that is really nice because everybody's kind of motivating yourself. So if you can work and practice with guys that have got the same ambition, then that definitely, I think, you know, helps you get going. Mm -hmm. Well, best of luck tomorrow, and hopefully if you can continue to keep the bogeys off the card, you'll be there or thereabouts. Thanks very much. Thank you.